this is my show, and this is connecting heaven and earth, and uh, that's very personal to me because the earth is basically the clay, and heaven is my spirituality and as I'm making the pieces, and I would like to talk with you about some of these pieces in the show. This piece was uh, inspired by Sedona, Arizona, and I went and visited these uh, hills and climbed on them, uh, and I believe that there is a uh, energy that's entering and exiting the earth. So this was my interpretation of that, that these coil, doing this coiling at the top was that energy that was going up into the heavens. And this one, I see it as a, a midnight uh, hill or mountain with uh, the energy entering and exiting the earth. I took gold, real gold, and it's very expensive. It's, it's about $40 a drop, and you buy it by the drop, it's about that big of a bottle, it's a super small bottle. And I, do, I diluted it down with alcohol, and I kept, did some research, couldn't find anybody that's ever done any diluting gold, liquid gold out. So I experimented, I used alcohol to dilute it, and I got put it in a spray gun and sprayed the whole thing with it, fired it, then I put stannous chloride. And the stannous chloride is what changed the gold to a, a iridescent oil look with different colors, and I, and I was, it, it worked. It, just, it, it worked pretty well. This is how failure creates a new solution to my work. This I I laid down the fairy chloride, which gave me the nice orange background. Then I put a, a sheet of glass inside and melted it in, and it looked terrible. It was, it was bad. So. I didn't like the design it made, so I took a hammer and chisel and didn't care if I broke the thing or not, and chiseled away the glass. Then I put gold over the entire circle on the inside, on top of that glass, and it was gaudy and looked terrible. So I stenciled off just these two lines of the gold, this was all back here, and then I sandblasted all that gold off of it, and it popped. I'm really excited about this piece. This was a, this was a piece that I, I, I drew on for two weeks, and I thought about Salvador Dali having fun. Oh, what if I make something out of this or make something out of that? There's so many little things on here that, that, that ha was happening that uh, it, was just, it was just fun. It was fun to do. A fairy chloride background inspired the whole thing. That I, I did this fairy chloride and all these colors came out and then the firing. And then I'm going, ooh, I think I see a boat. Ooh, I think I see this, oh, I think it's that. And it was just, my mind was just, just being creative, like I was looking to this and seeing things. I got fish right here. I got a manatees right there. This is Mother Nature, and she's inside this kind of looks like a kind of cotton ball, and then that's growing out of this boat. And then there's all kind of little things happening. This goose and the and the that's all going around. And some some pieces are fun. Some pieces pieces you have to work hard, too hard on. It's not as much fun. But as soon as you solve the problem, it, and you want to solve it a different way, it, uh, that's when it becomes fun again. It comes back to you. That, uh, and I, th this, is, this is a very special piece. Uh, that it kind of shows a little bit more of my drawing skills, which I don't really show too often. And if you look at it closely, these are actually all these little lines where they have combed marks are animals. And, uh, and I put black in the an animal and I wiped it off and I sprayed the whole thing with a clear. And I fired it and it was just okay. It wasn't great. It was just, I was disappointed. I expected it better. And so I put it back in the kill and fired it a second time, thinking nothing is good. What do I have to lose? Lines now look like veins and they look blue. It looks like blue veins and I call it life force. It's alive. This piece is this piece is so so alive. Now it's way beyond the little imagery that I had made. You can't really, you can't really see them anymore. It took on a life of its own, and sometimes you have to do that. And I have a sign in the room, which you you know just uh, try to accept what comes out of the kill instead of. And you do your very best, but you accept what comes out of the kill. And this is one of those. This is where the title uh, "Connecting Heaven and Earth." came in. I made these, they were flat on the table when I made them, 
and I wanted to see them up. I knew I made them so they would, would actually hang on the wall. And this spine that goes down the middle of where I connected them. David Corgill looked at one of my pieces and he looked inside and he said, all these lumps inside, the inside of your piece is better than your outside. So what I did on these, I threw the piece, hammered the outside to where I had lumps on the inside, cut it in half, turned the, in, turned the inside out, connected the top and the ends. And so what you're looking at is the inside of the pot. By doing that, it freed up my creativity and I really love these curves. They're curves that fit my hand. That's how I made them. And, uh, and then I went ahead and put a ferry chloride on and then I put a low fire glaze on top of that and then I went back and sandblasted it and the sandblasted made it pop. And I was very excited about the textured sand that was in there. It's a pretty, pretty heavy grit and that really made some nice freckles on the piece. This is my Mesa Verde series that I did. And uh, I'm, I'm constantly coming back to that experience that I had uh, going and following the Anastasi Indians. And they're the Indians that were here thousands of years ago. And they're not exactly sure what happened to them. They built their homes up in, this, in the cliffs for our protection. And, uh, and I'm always going back to this where they have holes and they have some trees on uh, kind of protecting them as well. It's on those cliffs. My respect for Mother Earth and being able to do things with the Earth, I feel I felt like is uh, directly coming from the Indian heritage that I have. This pot is Purple Haze, and I happen to like the song, and I named it I named it after. And I went back in with the with the taping off edges and. And, and adding a little bit to it. When I feel like the glaze is not there, when it comes out of the kill, there's different things you, I can do, and one is sandblasting. And I created these, these nice lines in here. So it's kind of interesting that this painting in the back is uh, a, ma as, it's a, a mask, a shaman mask is what I, what I call it. And I've got some of the same marks on this piece as I do this piece. And this was this is one of my older pieces. And this was this was from an experience I had in meditation. It was kind of interesting that uh, I took a caulking gun, because I had a regular caulking gun that you caulk windows with, and I drew with it. And if I liked the drawing, I left it. If I didn't like the drawing, I took the trial and worked it back in and it became texture on the piece. But these, these are my shaman mask. I did not do any research on what a shaman mask would look like. I wanted to come out of my own imagination. And these are my shaman mask that are having a dream. That's my, my interpretation of it. And so you can see the stars in their eyes and the darkness on the other side of the mask itself. So these are not specific people, it's basically it's just a mask. And I'm kind of wondering, I've never, I've never tried to make masks in clay, and I might do that. I might consider a series of masks, but just this green is just really luscious green that I accidentally hit. It was, it was a, totally did not anticipate that being green. It was supposed to be gray. And this is a Raku glaze. Fired in oxidation. When I made this piece, I was thinking about the canyon walls out in New, New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona. That comment from David Cargill with they looking the inside of my pot saying that looks better, <clears throat> it's better than the outside, where I did absolutely no thinking of it. And that's pretty awesome if you can make your piece look like you hadn't really thought about it. It just happened. And that spontaneity is, um, is really, really something I, I look for in my work that <clears throat> it, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. But um, turning the piece inside out has freed me up to do more sculptural pieces that are actually hanging on the wall. Some people ask me, what do, you, what do you like best? Well, I like best, I, the last thing I did is what I like best because that's, where I'm, that's the direction I'm going in right now. The last piece, and that's what this, this is my last piece that I created. Mm -hmm.